The other day I saw a tattoo of a rose that was done in only blue and white and darker blue on a kneecap, on a kneecap. And even though that tattoo might look beautiful on that first day, it ain't gonna last, man. And nobody wants to have to explain that their tattoo used to look good. I'm like, oh no, that's not what it looked like. Let me pull out my phone and show you what this tattoo really looked like that first day, because this is what I paid for. It's just bullshit. It's just like it's selling snake oil, and that's how I see it, and it, I'm getting worked up talking about it. <laughs> My name is John Mesa, and I own No Idols NYC, and I'm a tattooer for 15 years. I specialize in doing large, black and gray, and colored Japanese and illustrative tattoos. I'm also experienced in doing black and gray portraits and realism. Uh, the reason why I'm here today is to discuss my hate and disdain for tattoos that will not stand the test of time. So when I'm looking through the Instagram and I see a tattoo that is maybe five times smaller than it would should probably be, I'm talking about tattoos that are this big and have detail that should be in something this big, you know, it really grinds my gears. Those tattoos in a matter of six months to two years, you know, they're just going to turn into blobs and not last at all. A large tattoo done perfectly after a matter of six to seven years, it starts showing its age. The pigments start losing their vibrancy because of just sun exposure, the aging of the skin, all of these things matter and break up the tattoo. When you see a small tattoo that don't, doesn't take that into consideration, it just falls apart a lot faster. If you are a tattooer that are that is making these tattoos, you have a responsibility to inform your client about the longevity of these tattoos, which I don't feel that most tattooers that are doing this work are doing. You know, as long as you tell your client this is gonna fall apart, I feel like then do it. You know, because honestly, you know, people are entitled to get whatever it is that they want on their bodies. These things that I'm talking about here, I mean, they're things that I've learned not just from being a tattooer, but from having tattoos myself. I've been getting tattooed now for over 20 years. I've seen pigments disappear. I've seen lines go from being super thin to being huge, you know, and I've seen pigments completely change in tone, which is the wildest thing. So all of these things, when, when I see a tattoo that literally relies on a soft pink next to a light baby blue, and they try to sell that as contrast, get out of here. So I actually saw this tattoo on the internet and the day that I saw it I like screamed because this tattoo though is in impeccably done it's so clean and so sharp it's a bunch of magic tricks and it's a bunch of photography tricks there's an extreme blur effect on the back of this tattoo to sharpen up the details on this image even though it's surrounded with black the information that's on the top of the head it's too hard to read it's not very easily defined and it's just gonna smudge together and look like a bloody blob the one thing that this person really knows is they you know they know how they know their art but as far as you know the rules of tattooing there's no respect for them here and that's why I don't like this tattoo Wow immediately this tattoos done on a hand. You can't prevent your hand from wrinkling as you get older. Those little tiny subtleties that make it look exactly like the painting are not gonna last and it's gonna actually make the tattoo look very sloppy and look very old and dingy. A lot of this white highlights that are in this tattoo because it's gone on a hand will probably kind of yellow out which will match the yellow that's already supposed to be in the tattoo and then it'll also take out that contrast. There's two kinds of pigments. There's powdered pigment and then there's predispersed pigment. Powder pigment has bigger pigment molecules and those pigment molecules being bigger and stronger, you know, your body is not able to break them up as easy. So the longevity of that pigment is longer. Now, most of the ink that is used today widely is predispersed pigment. The particles being smaller, it makes it easier for the tattoo to be performed. It gets the ink particles easier on the skin, but also your body can break up that pigment 
a lot faster. You can't escape the limitations of the craft, you know? Tattooing just has limitations. I, I follow this artist on the Instagram because it's one of my favorite ones to hate. This is a perfect example of using tones next to each other that create no contrast. There's peach next to a light pink, next to a gray, next to a, a, a yellow, next to blue, next to more pink. It's just all these tones don't create contrast, but the biggest problem with this tattoo is its size. If this tattoo was three to four times its size, it might be able to hold up. But being that it is so tiny, all of the details just are gonna mush together. If you've ever seen a, a color line, you know, done in a tattoo, you notice that it doesn't hold its uh, consistency as well as a black line does. So these little orange lines are just gonna look like little blurry messes. And this whole tattoo is just gonna fall apart and I'm, this tattoo is disgusting. I hate it. I actually don't hate this tattoo. I think this tattoo has a lot of good things going on. Most of all, it's simple. A smaller the tattoo gets, the simpler it should be. So even though this tattoo doesn't have a lot of black, it has tiny little bits of just outlines or, or, or lines that they use to create the shape. So on the tail, you know, the little bit of an outline around the face, not a full line, but there's little hatch marks there. But most of all, I feel like this person broke up the tattoo. They left a good amount of skin and the back of the tattoo so it's not fully saturated and there's not too much play on tones there's not too much variation so even though this tattoo can heal and look lighter it'll still have and hold i feel like a lot of the shapes that are happening there so kudos to this person they actually did a really cool micro tattoo oh my god this tattoo ugh. It's another one that I, I completely, I just hate this tattoo immediately as I see this tattoo. The one thing that it has going on for is that they did put a lot of black in it, but the size is just too small. What kills me is that they had room there to make it at least 15, 20% bigger, occupy the same amount of space, and it would have looked so much better. This person knows what they're doing tattoo wise, absolutely, but they need to learn to just show restraint. Just because you can do something, it doesn't mean you should do it. You shouldn't do little tattoos like that. You should try to get your clients to go a little bit bigger so they can have a little bit more longevity and so they can have a tattoo that they're gonna like for longer. Oh my God, this is insane. There's things here that I can't even explain. There's all these transparency effects. Skin tones don't last as well as people may think they do. Some of these colors take a long time to settle down and I feel like this one, even though it looks really, really cool in this image, it's just crap. If you need to go back and get your tattoo redone every year or two to have it look like what it does, then you know, you're know you just putting a Band-Aid on, you know, on, on a floodgate to try to stop it. It's just not gonna happen. Wow, this tattoo actually, also, I, I don't hate this tattoo. The size is actually pretty good for what it is. My gripes about it are in the center of this face, there is this brown and goldish tones to create like the nose and the mouth. That looks too soft. There should be a little bit more deeper tones, some little deeper browns, even better yet, some black there. Just turn up the contrast as a whole. I actually don't hate this tattoo, I think it was done really, really well. It might need a touch up later to be able to revive some of those details, like I said, on the nose and mouth. But overall, I don't hate this tattoo. I think it's actually okay. Back in the day, you would see people on the street and be like, wow, who did that tattoo? And that's how you found out about good tattoos. But now the internet is the way that we see the tattoos the first time. And I think that too many people get caught up on that first day and forget that you know, it's gonna look very different. I commend all of the artists that do this, this kind of work because they have so much skill, you know? It takes a lot of talent and they're amazing artists. But what I think they should focus on is into educating your client. Teach them why their tattoo would be better if it was done just twice as big, three times as big. And that's the reason when I'm here and I'm talking to you guys to try to help educate you guys. I'm not here to bash or trash anybody's work. I'm just here to teach you what's real, you know? And from somebody that's been tattooing and who's has a lot of tattoos.